Hey there, I'm Hannah, your go-to Excel teacher from Sheet Leveller. If you've ever felt overwhelmed by data and wished for a quick way to make sense of it, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into Pivot Tables, an incredibly powerful tool in Excel that helps you analyse and summarise data in just a few clicks. Let me tell you, once you get the hang of Pivot Tables, you'll wonder how you ever lived without them. So, whether you're looking to find total sales by product, figure out which customers bring in the most revenue, or simply organise data more effectively, this lesson will have you covered. And don't worry, we're going step by step. So grab a cup of coffee, because trust me, this will be faster than making one. And let's get started. Before we create a pivot table, we need to make sure our data is clean and structured properly. Here's a quick checklist. Data should be in a tabular format, like a database or spreadsheet. Each column must have a header, like product, sales, customer. No empty rows or columns in the middle of your dataset. Avoid manual total rows in the middle. Pivot tables will calculate these for you. In our example, we have a sales dataset with columns for product, customer, company, sales and quantity. Everything is structured correctly, so we're ready to go. This is a pro tip that will save you a lot of frustration. Before inserting a pivot table, convert your dataset into an official Excel table. Why? Because when you add new data, your pivot table will automatically update instead of making you manually adjust the range. Here's how to do it. Click anywhere inside your dataset. Press Ctrl plus T or go to the Insert tab and select Table. Make sure My Table Has Headers is checked and hit OK. Boom. You now have an official Excel table. If the default formatting bothers you, you can change or remove it under the Table Design tab. Now, let's name our table for easier reference. In the Table Name box, top left corner, Type something simple like sales data and hit enter. Now let's create our pivot table. Click anywhere inside your sales data table. Go to the insert tab and click pivot table. Excel will automatically select your entire table. You should see table name in the range. Choose whether you want your pivot table in a new worksheet recommended or the same sheet. Click OK. Right this way, you will have made a blank pivot table to customise how you like it. But if that's something you have never done, it can be hard to achieve the desired results. So I will press Cancel and select the box next, which is the recommended pivot table. Excel will offer us many different pivot tables, which you can choose from. I will select this one here, which has the sum of sales. Now we have our pivot table created in a new sheet. I would like to change the way we see the fields on the left. We do this by selecting the little cog here, and I like to select the field section and areas section side by side. Now what does all this data mean? On the right hand side, you'll see the pivot table field list. This shows all the columns from your dataset. Below that, you'll see four areas. Rows, categories you want to group by, columns, Secondary grouping, e values, the numbers you want to calculate, EGG, sum of sales, filters, adds interactive drop down filters. Let's start with a simple analysis. Drag sales USD into the values area. Look at that. Excel instantly sums up sales for each customer. No formulas needed. By default, Excel sums up numbers. But what if you want the average sales per customer instead? Click the drop down next to Sum of Sales USD. Choose Value Field Settings. Select Average and click OK. Pro tip Right clicking on a value is your best friend in pivot tables. Your pivot table is starting to look great, but let's make it even easier to read. Right click on any sales value. Select Number Format, not Format Cells. This ensures formatting sticks when updating. 
Choose number and check use 1000 separator comma. Set decimal places to zero and hit OK. Let's say you're interested in viewing your data by region. One way to do that is to drag the region field into the filters area. Once it's there, click the drop down arrow. This lets you select a specific region to focus on. You can also turn on multi select if you want to look at multiple regions at once. Though in this example, there are only two regions, so it might not make a huge difference. Of course, you can always leave it set to all to see everything. Now, if you decide you don't want region as a filter, no problem. Just drag it into the columns area instead. Now, your pivot table will display customer name broken down by region, and Excel even adds grand totals for you automatically. Let's add another layer. Maybe we want to break things down by product description too. You can bring that into the rows area. When you do that, Excel will add subtotals so you can see totals for each product group. Now here's where we can start cleaning up the look of the pivot table. Go to the design tab and under grand totals, you can choose whether to show totals for rows, columns, both or neither. If you choose off for rows and columns, Excel will remove them completely. Or maybe you only want column totals, that's fine too. The same goes for subtotals. You can remove them by selecting do not show subtotals. It really depends on how you want your final report to look. Now let's talk layout. Personally, I prefer the tabular form layout. To do that, go to report layout and choose show in tabular form. This gives you individual column headers, which is super helpful. You might also notice there are blank cells where the labels are missing. We can fix that by going to report layout again and choosing repeat all item labels. This fills in those blank spaces to make things clearer. I'll turn that off for now, just so we can see both versions. See these little plus and minus buttons next to fields? Those let you expand and collapse the data. If you want to remove them from the chart, go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, click Show, and toggle the Field Buttons option off. Easy. And if your field list disappears for any reason, don't panic. It's easy to bring it back. Just head over to the Pivot Table Analyze tab again, click Show, and turn on Field List. Let me reset everything to how we had it before. I'll remove the region and product description fields. To do that, just drag them out of the layout area and drop them anywhere in the field list. Now we've got customer name against sales USD, clean and simple. Let's polish it a bit. Right now, the column header says sum of sales USD. That's not very friendly, so let's change it. If I just type sales USD and hit enter, Excel might not like it because it's the same name as the field. Here's the trick. Either add a space at the end or rename it entirely, like just sales. Same with the grand total label. You can rename that to something more intuitive like total. Want to change the whole look? Head to the design tab again and pick a pivot table style you like. There are plenty of preset options, or you can even create your own custom style. Now I want to sort the table so the highest sales appear first. Just right click any sales value, go to sort, and choose sort largest to smallest. But here's something to watch for. When the table updates, Excel may automatically resize the columns. If you don't want that, right click anywhere inside the pivot table, choose pivot table options, and uncheck the box for auto fit column widths on update. Let's take it a step further. Maybe you want to see each customer's sales as a percentage of the grand total and still see their actual sales values. No problem. Just drag the sales USD field into the values area a second time. Then right click the second column. Go to show values as and choose percent of grand total. You'll see there are tons of other options here too, like percent of parent row total, running total, rank, and more. Definitely explore those when you get a chance. I'll rename this column to Sales Percent for clarity. All right, pivot table number one is complete. Now let's create a second one. 
my favorite shortcut is to just copy the existing pivot table, paste it somewhere else, and adjust it. This keeps all your formatting intact and saves a bunch of time. For this second report, I don't need the sales percent column. Instead, I want to show product by sales, and I want it sorted from highest to lowest. Again, right click any value, choose sort, then largest to smallest. Now let's make our reports even more interactive with slicers. Instead of using drop down filters, we can add visual buttons. For example, take region, right click it in the field list, and choose add as slicer. Boom. You get a neat button style filter you can place wherever you want. Click on a region, and the report updates instantly. Want to customize the slicer? Click on it and use the Slicer Options tab. You can change the style, number of columns, button size, and more. And here's something super useful. If you want one slicer to control multiple pivot tables, just go to the Pivot Table Analyze tab, choose Filter Connections, and check the boxes for each table you want connected. When selecting multiple options in a slicer, you can either turn on Multi Select or hold down Control while you click. Final step. Let's make sure our pivot tables update automatically when we add new data. I'll expand the data table, add a new product and a new customer. Then we head back to our pivot table, right click and select refresh. Since both reports use the same pivot cache, they update together. You'll see the new customer and product are already showing up. And that's it. You've just learned how to build, format, and update pivot tables like a pro. We've covered filters, layouts, design tweaks, slicers, and even calculations. Pivot tables are such a powerful tool because they let you analyze your data quickly, no formulas required. They help you spot patterns, compare values, and make better decisions. And if you ever want to take it to the next level, you can even turn your pivot table into a pivot chart. But that's for another day. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you found this helpful, please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next Excel tutorial from Sheet Leveler. Until next time, happy Excelling!